Welcome to St. Mary's. I fall on my knees to the Father. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With so we're getting closer to Christmas. We have three candles lit, and this Sunday we'll light our fourth and final candle, and next week uh, it's already Christmas. And so let's continue to really um, ask the Lord to, to fill us with the grace of this season. Let's acknowledge our sins and receive His mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the coming solemnity of your Son may bestow healing upon us in this present life and bring us the rewards of life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Shower, O heavens, from above and let the skies rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation may spring up, and let it cause righteousness to sprout up also. I, the Lord, have created it. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens. He is God, who formed the earth and made it. He established it. He did not create it a chaos. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is no one besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone forth in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me, our righteousness and strength. All who were incensed against him shall come to him and be ashamed. In the Lord all the offspring of Israel shall triumph and glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response for the psalm. Let the clouds rain down the just one and the earth bring forth a savior. Let the clouds rain down the just one and the earth bring forth a savior. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. 
for he will speak peace to his people. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground. And righteousness will look down from the sky. Let the clouds rain down the just one and the earth bring forth a savior the lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a savior. We stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Raise your voice and tell the good news. The Lord our God, comes in strength. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As it's actually according to Luke. <laughs> the disciples of John the Baptist reported to him all that Jesus was doing. So John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? When the men had come to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to ask you, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus had just then cured many people of diseases, plagues, and evil spirits, and had given sight to many who were blind. And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them, and blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. The Gospel of the Lord. So many of you, maybe most of you, have heard of CCO, Catholic Christian Outreach, a wonderful university student uh, organization uh, that's actually based here in Ottawa, and I was honored to be asked to give one of the workshops for their big Rise Up conference that happens at the end of the year, so the last couple of days of December, and they, were, they asked me to speak about discernment, and so I prepared a little uh, teaching on discernment for the university students. But one of the points I make is that we're never going to have everything completely figured out. It's, this, it's just the nature of the adventure that God calls us to. You know, Jesus says to the disciples, follow me. And off they go on an adventure. And they ask Jesus, well, where do you live? He says, well, come and see. And so we have to understand that the mysteries will unfold as they're meant to unfold, and understanding will come as it's, meant to, as it's meant to come. And an example of this is John the Baptist, this great prophet who knew this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, who definitely had a clarity, who was able to see, but even he sends his disciples to ask, are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Wow. Even St. John the Baptist wasn't sure. I think he would have been expecting that this Messiah would have probably come with a few more thunderbolts, 
would have maybe been a little more impressive, you could say. Jesus came in remarkable simplicity, humility. So much of what he did was ordinary. He, he, he met with ordinary people, ate with ordinary people. Jesus was meek. And so John the Baptist was wondering, are you the one? We can also think about St. Joseph during this Advent season, who res resolved to dismiss uh, Mary quietly. He didn't exactly know what was going on until the angel appeared to him in a dream and told him, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. And we can even think about uh, our Blessed Mother in Luke chapter 2 when uh, Mary and Joseph found Jesus in the temple. It says, when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. And so again, this is just the nature of following the Lord, being on this wonderful adventure with the Lord. There are some things we just won't understand. And some of them, eventually we will, when the time is right. Like St. Joseph, which by the way, you know it's the year of St. Joseph, don't you? Pope Francis has declared this year, beginning December 8th to next December 8th, the year of St. Joseph. This is totally wonderful and awesome. Um, well, now, what was my point about St. Joseph? Oh, yes, the timing. St. Joseph resolved to dismiss or divorce Mary quietly. They say this decision by St. Joseph was one of the most important confirmations that the child in Mary's womb was not of man. And Joseph would have been the most obvious, likely, you know, person suspect, you know, when Mary was, was found to be with child. But no, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't Joseph. If it would have been Joseph. He wouldn't have divorced her. It wasn't Joseph. It wasn't Joseph. The child is of the Holy Spirit. And this little decision by St. Joseph is a signal to all, especially in the, in the early uh, church, that it's a signal, hey, it wasn't Joseph. So, can we say that the Lord withdrew the clarity on this until St. Joseph made this decision so people could understand that he's not the dad? You can't say he's the dad, he was go the, the biological dad, because he was going to dismiss her. And as soon as he made that decision, the angel came and revealed to him the plan. Does that make sense? Sometimes the Lord allows us to go on a little, you know, adventure. We, we make a few mistakes if, if, so that we can learn something. So, or, or we, you know, whatever. So, or sometimes even we get into a, an argument with someone we love and we think this is awful, but it's the best thing that happened to us because it kind of, you know, broke th some things open, finally talk about things. So the point is, is the Lord's in charge. He tells us, don't be afraid. Even as we're kind of going along this adventure that has so many questions in Deuteronomy, check this out. And this is, again, a God who tells us not to fear. Even as children, we don't know always what's going on. It says, the Lord your God carried you. Deuteronomy chapter 1. This is, they, they went through the, the desert into the promised land. The Lord your God carried you as one carries his own child all along your journey until you arrived at this place. We don't realize it, but even in our fumbling, and they fumbled a lot on their journey from Egypt to the promised land. Even in our fumbling, the Lord, our God, our loving Father is carrying, carrying us. He's got this. We don't need to be afraid. We need to trust the Lord. We offer our prayers with one heart and mind to the Father, who not only forgives sin, but also heals the wounds caused by sin, that the church may be a sign of God's mercy, pardon, and forgiveness to the world. We pray to the Lord. That those who have drifted away from the church through sin may discover the forgiveness of Christ. We pray to the Lord. That families who are divided and estranged from one another may be brought together by God's healing love, we pray to the Lord. 
that the sick may receive comfort and hope through our prayers and good works, we pray to the Lord. That those who have died may now enjoy the light of eternity, we pray to the Lord. For the intentions of, intention of today's Mass, for the repose of the soul of Betty and John O'Connor, offered by Mary and Helen O'Connor, we pray to the Lord. God our Father, help us bring your pardon, forgiveness, and peace to those we meet. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what, has, what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Marcel, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. Pour out your blessing, Father, upon your children. Heavenly Father, pour out your goodness 
into the hearts of your children now. Heavenly Father, open our eyes to see your presence, your wonderful presence, your holy presence, your goodness in our life, O oh Father. Father, help us to recognize that you do indeed carry us all along our journey. Father, give us the gift of faith. Give us, Lord, through faith, a fearlessness, Lord, to walk through life courageously and boldly. Lord, help us especially to love those around us. Help us to be present to those around us as you are present to us. Lord, give us divine wisdom. Give us the light of your Holy Spirit. Pour out this grace now, Lord, as we receive your blessing. Holy Spirit, come. Lord, let this blessing bring healing to everyone who needs healing. Let this blessing bring deliverance to everyone who needs deliverance and freedom. Let this blessing bring new life, Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God descend upon you now, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the divine power, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander now throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Go! Oh.